All right, so to start off, I don't really have a lot of space to reach down in there. I want to avoid taking this off if I can, just because, I mean, it's not really that big of a deal, but I just don't really want to take this on and off. Um, so I'm going to start with taking off the strut bar. That should hopefully get me enough space to be able to get my hand on there. Um, I've never actually removed it, but it looks like it's just these three right here and three over there. should be pretty simple. Okay, so I went ahead and removed the uh, front crash bar, or not crash bar, uh, strut bar. So there's, it's just these three bolts on each side, and then the two in the middle, which I forgot about. I would recommend removing the two in the middle first, because I removed the three on each side, and then when I did the two middle, the two middle ones, it was kind of wobbling as I was trying to loosen them. Um, so the three like this, they're all uh, 14 millimeter, these bolts. They're all 14 millimeters. Um, the one back here is kind of hard to get to because it's underneath this windshield wiper cowl. I guess you could remove this whole thing if you wanted to, um, but I just use a regular wrench that would get in there and was able to get it off. Uh, but with the socket, I wasn't able to fit back there. Um, but they were pretty stuck. Uh, so I sprayed some PB blaster on them, or some, some blaster. Uh, this stuff basically just helps bolts loosen up. So I sprayed it on all eight of them, let it sit for a little bit, and then the first ones I did, it helped a little bit, but by the time I got to the last side, the the uh, driver's side, it, they were super loosened up, so it helped quite a bit. Um, but if you guys ever have to remove this for something like this, or you're removing it to powder coat or whatever, it's really simple to take out, it's just those eight bolts. Um, now that I have it out, it doesn't give me a ton of room, but it definitely freed up a little bit of space there. So now you can see down in there, uh, there's the boost control. And it's got the, the one hose on the side there, which goes down into the intake. The one hose on the top, which goes down over there into the top of the intercooler piping, or the back of the intercooler piping. Um, and then the other hose right there, which goes down way down there into the, it's like the wastegate area. Um, so I'm going to do, replace the hoses with that quarter inch hose. I'm going to just do one hose at a time so that way I don't get mixed up and, uh, you know, pull off all three and then route one to the wrong area. It's kind of tight quarters. If I have to, I might pull off this blow-up valve. Uh, I'm going to try doing it without pulling it off, but it might be it might be too hard to get down there and really see what I'm doing, so I'm going to have to pull it off. Uh, I wish this battery terminal wasn't here, but I can't really remove that too easy. So that's just gonna have to stay. The, of course, the boost control is like directly behind it. So we're gonna see how it goes. All right, I uh, completed the install. Thanks to Leslie, she helped me. <laughs> yeah, but she, she helped me on the end there. Um, so basically, let me just show you guys. I was gonna record while we were doing it, but it took a lot longer than I expected. It's dark out now. Um, the main reason is because of the angle I had to lean over right here. My knees were starting to give out on me. Um, but you can see the boost control down there. So I have, when you look at it from a distance, it looks sick now because I've got, I used, I end up being able to use blue for all three lines. So the one down there that connects to the wastegate is pretty loose. So I tried double zip tying it. I'm hoping it stays on. The one back there that connects to the back of the intercooler hosing, also pretty loose. I tried double zip tying it. <laughs> um, the one down there that connects to the, uh, or wait, right there that connects to the intake. That one's pretty tight. Um, I didn't have to double zip tie, it came on pretty good. And then the three on here, on the boost control itself, were all, you know, these fittings are made for these size lines, so it worked really well. Um, getting that screw, I, I ended up undoing the two screws to pull the boost control out. But then there's two plugs, like two wire harnesses, and I could only get uh, that one right there, that you see, right there. That one I was able to unplug. But there's one that plugs into the bottom there. You can't really see it from this angle. But I couldn't get it to unplug. Like the little uh, tab that you gotta push down, I just couldn't get it to unplug. So I was only able to pull my boost control up to like, I was only able to pull it up to like right here. So I had this bar off, but I was still, I, I was uh, hard headed and didn't take off the blow off valve. And then with this terminal here, I was kind of like, had both my hands in this area trying to work on it. And it was super, Super annoying, just because it was such small working quarters, my hands were getting like fatigued. So Leslie uh, ended up coming over and helping me a little bit, just because she has small hands. She was able to reach down there 
do some of the zip ties and stuff. Um, and then I had her put back on the thing, just so I was showing her how to use the different sockets and stuff. Uh, props to her for helping me because I was starting to get frustrated. I dropped a, I dropped a fitting down there at some point, but I found it. I have this handy little uh, magnetic extend, extendable magnet I was gonna use, but it wasn't much help because turns out those fittings aren't magnetic. So luckily it fell all the way through and went down below the car, so I was able to find it. But that's it. Uh, that's all I'm gonna do for today. I think those lines look sick back there. Um, because now when you go to look in the engine bay, you just see all these blue lines back there. So I'm really happy I was able to use the blue for all three. Um, really, really happy. Now, hopefully, when I drive it, hopefully all three ends on there stay on. I mean, they're, they're loose, but like you have to pull them. But even with the zip ties, you're able to pull them off. So, you know, I tried tightening down the zip ties as tight as possible, but the lines just aren't soft enough. It wasn't able to get them to stay on. I'm mostly worried about that one down there on the wastegate. That one is like pretty loose. It slides around a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna take it for a drive. I mean, if it comes off, I'll know. I'm sure I'll be boosting weird. I'll pull over and see a line hanging off back there, which would be terrible. <laughs> but that's really it. Um, I'm gonna do more parts tomorrow or the next day. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, you, if you have any questions about upgrading the lines or the fittings for that boost control, or you have any questions about where anything's located, uh, just comment down below. I'll do the best to answer your comments. Um, also, you can always follow me on Instagram at the underscore slow underscore evo underscore x. So the slow evo x with underscores in between each word. Uh, I post on Instagram pretty much every day. I want to start posting on YouTube more often. I just got to uh, get motivated to make videos again. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you next one. All right. Bye. Hello everybody, this is Racing on an 8, also known as David. Uh, so it's been a long time since I've made a YouTube video. I've been away on deployment. Uh, as many of you guys know, for the last six months I was in Japan. Um, I'm now home, but I'm in quarantine for two weeks. I got about a week left. So I figured now is a good time to work on my car. Um, so I haven't made any YouTube videos, obviously. Uh, I, I, I want to do uh, gaming. I want to I want to make my channel a mixture of gaming videos and car videos moving forward. Um, I know it's been mostly car videos for a while. I did a couple RuneScape videos uh, while I was on deployment, but that's not really a, a game that very many people watch. I really just put the videos on there, me getting 99s and some skills, uh, just to kind of like uh, archive my achievements, I guess you could say. Now, update on the Evo. It's got some issues. Uh, I fixed some issues, so I'll just run over real quick what's going on with it. <clears throat> so number one, um, as many of you guys know, the biggest issue I had was the boost problem. So boost was hesitating, RPMs were being weird, uh, it was driving weird, um, it was just, it was almost like a boost leak but I couldn't find one. So as I showed you guys in a previous video, I changed out all kinds of stuff trying to fix the issue, couldn't fix it, got home, it was still driving weird because uh, obviously nothing had changed over the last six months. Um, but it came on saying fuel system lean, I had a check engine light so I said okay enough is enough. I'm bringing it back to the shop to get a diagnostic done again. So I got a tow to the shop, got a diagnostic done. They said it was the fuel pump, uh, which seems strange to me because I changed out the fuel pump uh, when the issue started and it didn't seem to fix anything. Turns out the fuel pump was the issue, I was correct, but when I changed it out and put in the uh, DW65C fuel pump that's in there now, um, I messed up one of the O-rings. So he wasn't too specific, I don't know if I didn't put an O-ring in at all or if the O-ring was kind of tilted, um, but somehow I messed up one of the O-rings, so they just went in there, fixed the O-ring, and now it works perfectly. So the car works perfectly, it's running great, um, it's building boosts like normal, and it feels great to be able to boost around and drive my Evo like it's meant to be driven again. It's been almost a year, I've been having to drive it super slow and been worried about blowing it up, et cetera, et cetera, but now it drives great. Uh, so driving great, that's awesome. Now moving in real quick, just talking about some of the issues I have with the car. Um, so, oh, also, I had them install my Tile QRJ uh, recirculating blow-off valve with this blue vacuum line. Um, when they first installed it, it was slightly incorrect. This was flipped, so it's pointing towards the back of the car. It's supposed to be pointing towards the front, um, but like if I had the ETS intake, it would be up here. Um, but with the AEM intake, I had to put it back here. 
So pointing straight up is about the best flow I can get for this intake. Once I put in the ETS intake in the future, it'll be pointing straight forward with the vacuum line routed back there, which will be the optimal uh, position. But work pointed right here, it still works fine. Um, it's been building boost great, so that's good for now. Um, real quick before I get into the issues, let me just tell you guys what I wanna do today in this video with my car. Uh, as you can probably see, I'm assuming the title is gonna say something about it. But back here, I have my Grim Speed uh, three port boost control and it's got these fittings on it, one, two, three, and those little vacuum lines leading off from it. So what I wanna do is install these uh, upgraded fittings, right? These are from Cobb. Uh, these fittings are slightly larger and then leading off of those fittings have this larger size vacuum line, which will then, uh, you know, have better flow and give my boost control a little bit better response time. Now, unfortunately, I wanted to do it all with this blue tubing, but I used some of the blue tubing for the uh, blow valve. So I have some, but it might not be enough. But I'm hoping between this black tubing that was supplied and that blue tubing, which both look like the upgraded size, um, I'll be able to route all three of those lines. In the future, Whichever line I use the black tubing for, I'll probably change it out for more blue tubing when I order more. Um, now, real quick, talking about the issues in my car. Number one, this horn snapped off. So the, the bracket where it was mounted in the grill there, it snapped off. So it was just sitting in the grill. So I went ahead and unplugged it and uh, taped off the wiring in there so it wouldn't get any water in it. But now, because only one horn's plugged in, that one doesn't work. So when I honk my horn right now, it's just a stock horn. So I need to get a new back bracket fabricated get this mounted back in there, hook them both up, and then it should be working. Um, that's issue number one. Issue number two, my tow hook. So when my car got towed onto the flatbed, the tow truck driver hooked up to this tow hook and used it, which is not really a functional tow hook. Uh, I mean, it's welded back there, but it's not really supposed to be used for towing the car. I didn't realize he was doing that because I was sitting in the car, so I couldn't see it. Um, but basically he bent this, so now whenever I go to put the tow hook back on, this is the furthest I can get it to go, is right here sideways i can't get it to go straight down uh, unless i loosen it and then it goes straight down but then it's very wobbly and it might come undone so i guess i'm just stuck with my tow hook like this i mean in the future i want to get the varus v3 front bumper with the uh i'm gonna have to get the jdm crash beam so this is going to come out anyway so i guess until that happens whenever that happens down the line i'm just going to be riding around with the sideways tow hook which kind of sucks but uh i just can't get it to go straight and if i pulled this off this part is still welded on, so I'll just have a pipe sticking out the front, which would just look even worse. So that's kind of what I'm stuck with right now. Those are both minor issues. Um, let's see, other issues. Okay, so when I start up the car, this has only been happening since I've gotten home. I start it up, and the belt, I can't tell if it's a serpentine belt right here or one of these pulleys. I know there's the tensional pulley, the idler pulleys down there. I can't tell what it is, but something around here squeaks. So I turn it on and it's like squeak, 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 squeak for a couple minutes and then it goes away. And if the car is hot, like say I drive it to the gas station and then I park, then I turn it on, it doesn't do it. It's only on cold starts. It'll squeak uh, pretty bad for a minute or two until the car warms up. So I don't know how pressing of an issue that is. Obviously if the serpentine belt is fucked up or torn and that's what's causing the squeaking, it's a big deal. But I got this belt changed out since I've had the car. Um, I think I got it changed out around 50,000 miles roughly i'm at almost 70 right now so it hasn't been that long so the belt's probably not fucked it's probably one of the pulleys um but i'm gonna have to get that diagnosed later <coughs> oh excuse me um so let's see other issues with the evo um so i'd say one of the it's not necessarily a big problem but it could be uh the all-wheel drive fluid so if you guys have been watching my channel you know that right before deployment I got my all-wheel drive or AYC pump changed out of the dealership under warranty. Um, they changed out the pump and when they changed it out, they didn't tighten the lines down correctly. So you see that all-wheel drive fluid right there? It was leaking all over my floor and my car wasn't getting dri driven when I was gone. Uh, my wife doesn't know how to drive stick, but it was just sitting here leaking onto the floor. Slowly, slowly leaking, but over a couple months, it leaked out quite a bit. Um, so I look, I had my wife look under there. The lines had fluid on them. So I had her bring it to the dealership. And when she brought it to the dealership, they tightened the lines back down, told her it was good to go. Um, and that was it. 
But when I came home, I checked it, and that big stain is from originally. There's a smaller stain right next to it that was looked way more fresh. Uh, I looked in the reservoir, and it was about this far below the minimum line, so it's still leaking, although it seems to be leaking a lot slower. Um, I filled it up in between the minimum and maximum, uh, got it towed to the shop, and then drove it about an hour home, checked it, and it's down just below the minimum. So it seems like it's leaking slowly. Not a huge leak, it's not like when I drive it, the reservoir is empty, but it's slowly leaking. So I'm thinking my best bet is just bring it back to the dealership again, tell them the issue is still there, and see what they can do. Um, the reason why I want to do that is because it's covered under warranty by them because they changed out the parts so recently. So even though they obviously kind of suck, hopefully they can fix it, and they're my best bet because they'll be able to do it for free because they're the ones that jacked it up. Um, other than that, that, I'm pretty sure that's all my main mechanical issues with the car. Um, obviously, I've got some problems like the, uh, the rear bumper doesn't fit quite right. You can see it doesn't extend all the way to the fender. So I want to get that fixed at a body shop. Um, also on the side over here, you can see it's popped out. And for me trying to push it back in, the taillight scraped a little bit of paint right there. So I'm going to get the STM uh, crash bar. Uh, the STM crash bar fits correctly with that Varus V2 rear bumper. Uh, right now I have no crash bar because uh, the USDM crash bar didn't fit and I didn't feel like getting it cut to fit so I just pulled it out. So I'm really, really dangerous right now. If I get rear-ended, I got no crash bar. They'll go right through that bumper, right into my trunk, right into my back seat. Uh, it could be catastroph catastrophic. So I really want to get that STM tuned uh, rear crash bar. It's more of like a bash bar. It's like a tube. Um, get that put in there and then get the bumper properly fitted on top of it. And then once the bumper's on there properly, get hopefully have a body shot, be able to extend the corner piece, just that, that one inch or two, so that the uh, fender is looking good. Um, I don't know if I need to do that or not, because also I'm thinking in the future, possibly going wide body uh, fenders, which would cover right over top of that. That area might need to get cut anyway for the wide body fenders to fit. So really my, my main concern first is uh, getting that crash bar put on the back and getting the bumper fit on top of that um, before I worry about that little body work right there because that might be covered over by the wide body anyway. Um, other issues that I can fix now, um, it's not an issue, but the upgrading of that uh, three port boost control, hopefully I can do that right now. And then uh, the underglow. So my underglow has been on and off for a while. I've had parts ripped off by dead possums. I've had parts put on there sloppily and the wiring came off and got ripped through. It seems like every time I order a new replacement tube, something goes wrong and one of them breaks. Uh, but now I finally have four working underglow tubes. So I need to install those all, um, install all of them. The, the only one that still works and is on is the rear by the muffler. Um, the front one got ripped off long ago. The uh, driver's side is currently sitting in the back seat. You can see the wire leading out there. It's still hooked up, but I, I had to take it off to get an alignment and put it in the back seat. Uh, the right one got ripped off, so I need to replace the right one, pull that one out, replace the front one, and then hook them all up and wire them, and I should finally have my underglow working again. Um, it's, not that I am, it's not that I love the underglow so much I can't drive without it. It's more like because I already have it on there, I've got all the wires, taking up all the space in my trunk, I may as well have it all working correct or just pull it all off. And I kind of like it, so I don't really want to pull it all off. So I may as well get it working uh, properly rather than having, like right now if I turn it on, the back is the only part that lights up. So it's kind of just a waste of time. Um, other stuff in the future, I want to get the rest of my bolt-ons. Um, everything that's going to go in the engine bay, including the new valve cover, the crash bar. Uh, I have a metal valve cover waiting. Uh, that, uh, not crash bar, tower strut bar right there. The ETS intake, all the piping, the heat shield. Um, all that stuff. I want to get it all powder coated purple to match that blow off valve. And when I have, I'm going to go with a purple and carbon theme in the engine bay. Um, obviously, stuff that I can cover in carbon would be like the fuse box, that little relay box, the cooling plate right up here. Um, I'm going to get a catch can to replace, hopefully, get a catch can that's a dual uh, coolant one to replace that coolant. Get a carbon fiber power steering uh, cover if I can find one because uh, Password JDM makes the one that goes over that and they're now out of business, but hopefully I can still find one used. Um, down the line, I'm going to get a Borg Werner 
Uh, stock frame turbo, upgraded turbo back there. Um, the map uh, tubular manifold back there. Uh, I'm gonna maybe upgrade the fuel rail. I know it's not necessarily needed. Lower intercooler piping isn't necessarily needed. Uh, bigger intercooler is part of the bolt-ons. I'm gonna change out that little baby fuel pump I put in for a wall burrow. Uh, definitely said that wrong. A Wally 450, I'll just say Wally 450. Um, upgrade the fuel lines. Just basically get all my supporting mods ready for the big turbo. Um, and then when it comes to exterior, interior, I've got a never ending list of stuff to do. I mean, you guys know how it is with Evos and with cars in general. You always got more stuff to add on, more stuff you want to do, so yeah. Um, I've got a really long list, but I'm, I'm just focusing on taking care of the issues first before I start investing money into carbon fiber parts that I don't necessarily need. Uh, I just want to get the car running and performing properly. And some of these things that are little issues now, like the leaking all-wheel drive or the squeaky belt, they could turn out to be bigger issues if I ignore them, so I'd rather just fix them. Um, I am, however, moving in October to Virginia. Uh, we're currently about to put the house on the market. We're still trying to work out all the details to moving, um, but I'm getting stationed in Virginia, so I'm leaving North Carolina. So most of this stuff will have to wait until I get settled in there. I'm just happy I was able to get the largest part taken care of before moving, which was the car running weird. Uh, now it's running correctly. Fuel levels are good, so that's good. All right, so looking at this right now, there's the three lines back here and the three fittings. And then it looks like the lines go back. One goes back there by the lower intercooler piping. Um, one goes down there to the uh, wastegate. And the third one shoots off over this way. Yep, shoots off right down there, right to the intake. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this without moving the blow valve. I might have to take the blow valve out to give me some space, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and try.